Welcome back to the nerdy news you need to know throughout the week on iHeartRadio and podcast services around the world. Because my name's Hoodie. And I'm Insta Weather Kevin. And you're officially listening to this thunderous filled episode of what, Kev? Crisis. On Infinite Podcast. Yes, as of this recording, there is a cold front moving in the D. I guess the Maryland, Virginia ever area. Yes. So might have some background noise here. And it's uh not Jack Frost or who uh yeah, Jack Frost? Sure. He Yeah, that was the one. It was two movies. It was one with Michael Keaton that was a kid's movie, and then another one that was a movie about a serial uh, killer named Jack Frost. It was Heat Miser and what's the other one? Uh Snow Miser. Uh, there we go. Snow, Snow Miser yeah. coming in. Coming in for a snow wave. Oh baby. I still find those um, Christmas specials very disturbing. That that animation style is yeah, just but, not for me. But you gotta watch them. It's classic, high quality Christmas content by watching those movies. Even if you've seen them a billion times, you still gotta watch them. I will stick with Home Alone, thank you. <laughs> and I'll stick with just the first one because the second one involves a certain president we don't like. <laughs> second one's also a bit darker. The first one he was defending his home. The second one he was inviting. Criminals into a house he didn't own to torment them. It was That's his very aunt and uncle. It was his aunt and uncles that was like <laughs> re- getting renovated or something. Which yeah, was just like, like... <laughs> he, he went. He went full. Um, what's the guy from Saw? Jigsaw. Um, yeah, Jigsaw. Like coming to my house of, of Fletcher's. Ha ha ha. Well, you, you've, very seen, you've seen the conspiracy theory that J- uh, Saw is like a long, long, long awaited sequel franchise to Home Alone. Like Home Alone's the prequel to Who Becomes Jigsaw later on. <laughs> And I wish someone would make that horror movie and make the connection. And the reason why he's so messed up because his parents were neglect- neglectful. I mean, come on. We won't. <laughs> it's, it, it writes itself. It uh, really does. <laughs> we got a jam-packed show for you today. Not only are we talking about Midnight Suns most likely getting delayed, even though it hasn't been official yet. Most likely as of this podcast recording. Some updates on HBO Max and all those DC films we want slash don't want at the same time. There's teases already for the future of the MCU, at least on Disney Plus, of stuff to come before Disney Plus Day. And, as it says in the title, we're reviewing all of I Am Groot in one review and adding it officially to our MCU in review. Dude, my cat is pissed at me right now. Why? Is it hearing the thunder or is it hearing my thunder? No, she hasn't been upstairs in like three days, so she's really upset with me. You brought her up there or she wandered up there? So she, was, she went up like two Story weeks ago. Story time with Kevin. <laughs> I'm sorry. She went up like two weeks ago, and um, uh, something startled her. But I'm not sure what. And she scratched Leah. So she's been she's been banished to the basement since then. Mm, I see. I see. Well, you know what? You two will bond every time. Like Teddy Nine. All of a sudden, your cat will make noises in the podcast. I told my sister, like, yeah, let's strike two. Uh, third strike. She's out of here. So if you want a cat hoodie? No, I'm good. I got I got a handful already over here. Who's itching his butt? Get out of your butt. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here, but. <laughs> but you can see everything we're talking about and so much more by going to hot995.com slash crisis crew or Kev, where can they go to get out of their butts? Uh, at infinite underscore pods on Instagram and Twitter or at youtube.com slash crisis on infinite podcast. Like, subscribe, and hit that bell and get out your butt. <laughs> I'm just going to put that on. I already know I'm going to make that something. Get out of your butt! Uh, <laughs> Instead of how's your butt, it's get out of your butt. Um, but Kevin, we should change what you're doing to how, how's your butt. No, no, <laughs> I I have a PTSD history with that phrase, so it's not. <laughs> My dad told me when you get older, um, that's that's how you greet other other guys. You don't have to healthy. Hey man, how's your butt? Oh, but you do it with Ace Ventura style, so you do talking through your butt. <laughs> We should that can be another thing for the podcast. No, we can just turn around and do. I don't want that to be the crisis crew thing. I don't want the crisis crew greeting. Hello. With pants on, of course. Either way, I think we're good. But Kevin, <laughs> we properly started the podcast with what you're doing, which Kevin wants to call "How's your butt" uh, for today <laughs> and today only. And guess what, Kevin? I'll give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing a bunch of nothing. Yeah, how's your butt? <laughs> But it's good, you know. How's things are moving, how's moving your well. <laughs> um, but yeah, I did nothing this week. On Monday, I did oh, shoot. I did nothing Monday. Went back to the gym on Tuesday. That was hey. cool. That's something. There we but go. That's, that's you know that's what I should be doing. We going to Planet Fitness. We going to LA, whatever fitness. Are we doing a home gym? Planet Fitness. I am trying to get a um a um punching bag for my basement though. I think there that'd be kind of cool there to you have. Go. You and Aaron Banks can be best friends if you want. Aaron, Aaron is um, he's prestige too far from me. I'm still beginner level. Aaron's I cannot like, wait no. to see him at the Baltimore Comedy Show for uh, J- Intern John's Comedy Show because 
Home dude's gonna be stacked since the last time I saw him. Like, he already looking like it. Like for the next con that, c- that comes around here, if he wants to go as Luke Cage, he totally could. He could. It's a good. It's a good <laughs> idea. You take that down, Aaron. Right now, you start that yellow. T- it's an easy costume. Just a yellow T-shirt, really. And either a bald cap or just go bald for like a week. Yeah, just one week. You know, try it out. <laughs> and you have you have a beard already, so you're good. There you go. <laughs> but what, what else have you been doing, Kev? Uh, like I said, nothing. I, I restarted season one of The Flash for some reason. <laughs> for some reason. Yeah. And does it still hold up? Yeah, it's still pretty good. Um, I, I just got to the episode where, they, where, where he um, time traveled for the first time. I forgot mm-hmm. how good that was, mm-hmm. actually. Um, I got to the first crossover, Flash versus Green Arrow. That was pretty cool. Um, so now I'm about to go go into the Zoom season, which I'm excited about. There you go. There you go. What you been playing? I saw you, uh, Kevin's Discord status is always on now. Uh, so currently, yeah. even though he's he is doing the podcast, it also says he's playing Roblox at the same time. My daughter has been playing Roblox. She played Spiral the Dragon for like an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. And I saw that on Discord when I set it up. I was like, oh, Kevin's playing Spyro right now, apparently. <laughs> and she played the Avengers. When she doesn't like to actually play the Avengers. She likes like to walk around the social spaces. Oh, wait. No, is she playing Spyro? She's playing the, the newer remastered one, kind of like the Crash Bandicoot? Yeah. I, yeah. And it's funny. I didn't realize. I actually beat the first one. I haven't started the second or the third one yet. So, yeah, hey, got something to do. You, can, you guys can tag in tag out for it. Um, but yes, yeah, so right now she's playing more video games than I am because I'm playing nothing. Well, it's okay. You're, you uh, you have a you have a lot going on. That's all right. You're a big boy now. I, I really don't. But yeah, I but really don't. Your butt? But I don't. <laughs> how's your butt, man? Oh, so how's my butt? Sorry, I, was, yeah. I got thrown off because it's not the usual intro for it. Uh, I'm doing good. Butt's doing all right. Uh, <laughs> uh, started Harley Quinn season three. It definitely is kind of meh so far. Um, I think it's just like I think season one, season season two was really good. Season three hasn't like hooked me yet. Um, so I'm hoping potentially a couple more episodes. They had to sort of establish everything that's going on this season for the first couple episodes that the back half will be really good. It's cool. Um, I forgot it was out. I know they did a they did a, they did like a joke on something that was like a obvious um gesture or something. I can't remember what it was. I saw it on I saw it on IGN. But um, that's good. I, I, I've still yet to watch one episode of the show, so it's way ahead of me. You'll get there. Um, also started Digimon Survive. Yep, that Digimon game that's out that's part uh, <laughs> that is part uh, graphic novel. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then part RPG at the same time. Um, not liking the visual novel part of it because it's kind of eh. But uh, the RPG part of it's cool because I get to see all these digivolutions that I have been missing out on since the 90s. And this is maybe a, a dated reference to um, um, some younger listeners, but Digimon is the GoBots to Pokemon's Transformers, and I, and I just never been able to get into it. Oh, I don't know about that, Kevin. I mean, come on. The Digimon TV show went pretty hard, at least that first season. They didn't. They don't keep the evolution, so what's the point? This might be a good dumb, dumb Twitter debate we might have, is like, which was more iconic for your childhood, Digimon or Pokemon? And or we continue it just by saying, all right, the show, the show, the games, the toys, which could really be the Digivice or I guess a Pokeball um, or the did I say the movies or the movies? Because I feel like uh, Pokemon, the first movie, iconic Digimon, yeah. the first movie, not as iconic, but still pretty good on its own right. Just a cash grab, man. It's all it was. It was a corporate uh, cash grab. I don't know. Um, but the game, my one main gripe with it, and I really wish they did this, is... It would have, the game probably would have been had to been pushed back, but they really needed to put a dub for this game because it kind of takes you out of just if you're reading, reading. I'm like, I'm just reading a book right now. I'm not being entertained at all because everything's still uh, natively in Japanese. They do have English subtitles. Great. I know it's a whole sub versus dub debate, but when I think of Do- uh, Dogimon, <laughs> Digimon, I iconically, iconically think of like Agamon's voice. I'm like, that's not Agamon's voice. What are you doing? Yeah, I had the issue a lot when I had my, I think my PS1 and my PS2, I had like the Japanese conversion kit to it, so I mm-hmm. could Japanese games. Mm-hmm. And they were always really fun, but at the same time, I'm like, I gotta read. Oh, yeah. They uh, so it's, it's funny, because like I turned the volume down, because like a lot of the voices are very like, very over-exaggerated for some of the things they're just saying. And I'm like, okay, I don't need this to pop up in more work call. It sounds weird. So I turned it down, so pretty much in doing that, it, it's all right. I think it's definitely like, as of right now, a 7 out of 10, I would probably give it. Uh, Digimon. 
I'm excited just to see what it is. And I might start Digimon the show again because I kind of just want to relive that that uh, childhood glee I had. Are you playing on Xbox or your Switch? Uh, playing on Xbox. It is on Switch and PlayStation. The weird thing is, even though it's a game that's coming out in 2022, it only released on last-gen consoles. So it's only on PS4, the Xbox version. Switch kind of been going, but it has like that up boost thing, but it's not like truly a Xbox Series X game or a PS5 yeah. game. That's going to be actually an issue coming up soon. Is um, as the PS5 and, and the Xbox Series X become more plentiful, mm-hmm. the transition from finally from really really from the last gen to the new gen. I, Come I feel on, like that's a, baby, a, a give it issue. to us. We're ready for it. Come on, they said they're making more PS5s later this holiday, but will there be any left? Still, probably not. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't think I'm getting a PS5 now till after the new year because that's how paying for this cruise. Come on, tax return. We're looking for it, baby. Come on, be a good Ooh. one this year, Kevin. Your boy's I, I been. Owed, I, if I get anything <laughs> back this year, I'm, I don't. I don't know, man. I owed last year. I was pretty upset. Your that, boy's been doing overtime things to try and get the PS5 money and other things, but what are you gonna do? <laughs> At this point, I'm about to go um, start driving Uber again. All right, if you want. Um, and finally, so probably want to talk this because it's relevant because it came out this week. Saw Prey on Hulu. Pretty good. Um, definitely probably one of the better, one of the better Predator movies. Uh, I did that on, I did that no no purpose. I knew that it was happening regardless. Um, I would still say probably Predator 2 and Predator, the, the first one kind of still the top ones. I'd probably put this. Then the Predator. Oh, there's a lot of Predator movies. And then AVP somewhere probably in the bottom because it wasn't as good as you remember. Was anybody in the movie as upset as Danny Glover was in Predator 2? No, was they the weren't. Time. But they did say, if it, ble- uh, if it bleeds, we can kill it, which is an iconic line from the first Predator movie. And the and do you want me to spoil it for you a little bit? I mean, I guess they defeat the Predator. So oh, I mean- <laughs> like every good Predator movie, they do <laughs> defeat the Predator. Um there is something that connects this movie to other Predator movies. And at the very end, there's like a small teaser that if you kind of scroll through the credits, you don't see it. You got to watch the credits really to pay attention. Um, so if it does get a sequel good, I don't think it will because it was the 20th Century Studios like last movie it had on its docket that went to Hulu. Good, though, because I, I, when I heard like the concept of this one, I thought, oh, that sounds like a good video game, but not a good movie. Mm-hmm. So I'm happy they, they pulled it off because I think it has like a 91 or 92 on um, Rotten Tomatoes, something like that. So I'm happy the PC people are enjoying this and like the franchise has been re energized because mm-hmm. everybody thought that last one with Ar- like Arnold Schwarzenegger's, that kid found Arnold Schwarzenegger stuff, something like that. Mm-hmm. Kind of, oh, yeah. That was going to be good. The, it was the Predator and we all thought Arnold Schwarzenegger was going to be the end, end credit uh, yeah. thing popping out of the secret weapon and it wasn't. It was just human armor. And that one exact, that, and that was one with like like, like a predator and, and a super predator, wasn't it? Uh, that was predators. The predator was just one predator. <laughs> yeah, because the, the 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 most recent one was the one where it was like one predator and then the one like bigger, taller predator. That's what I'm thinking about. I think so. Yes, yes, yeah. it was normal predator, and then it was it was a black predator. Yeah, <laughs> was, not, that, not, that, not, not black. That's what they black. called it. it. Was black predator. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but. Everybody thought that was going to be like the one that's going to be like, this is going to be it. And that wasn't it. So yeah, I'm happy this seems like it, it is it. <laughs> and if you want to go and relive our actual thoughts on the Predator movies, you can scroll down our Halloween special last year of all the Predator movies in review. For you people, you got it. Got time to please. <laughs> <laughs> Get it. Um, but that's what I've been doing. Let us know what you've been doing at Infinite Underscore Pods. But Kevin, it's time. We spent a little bit too long on this stuff. It's okay. It's time for the news. The news. News. Well, Kevin was. Thank mid- you, past Kevin. He was excited, wasn't he? He was mid sentence, ready to go. <laughs> he was. He was. I'm, I'm gonna hit this. I'm hit it good. I'm good. <laughs> uh, but Kevin, first things first. We're the realist. Haven't done that in a while, so I got to do that. But it looks like, unfortunately, another one of my damn games I drafted for this year is getting delayed into next year. Yeah, Midnight Suns. Um, it's going to be delayed. Uh, in other news, water is wet, if you have not heard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the publisher of the game, Take Two, which you know also does GTA, does the NBA games, um, had a financial call earlier this week, said that uh, it is coming out before the end of the fiscal year. That concludes on March 31st, 2023. While I didn't necessarily say it was delayed, 
pretty much was kind of the indirect way saying of it's not hitting its release date of October this year. Uh, so, you know me, I, I like conspiracy theories. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you think this delay is in response to the negative response to the RTS mechanic of this game? And they're going to try to retool it somehow. I think another conspiracy theory involved with this game, but kind of involved with that too. Delaying it, obviously, because they work on things. Because any any rush game probably ain't going to be good. Any delayed game, it has potential to still be good. Mm-hmm. Um, Disney Plus Day is coming out in September. They're announcing a bunch of series. We have a lot of blank slates on the sort of ah, phase five and okay. six timelines. Why not delay this game until they announce, hey, Midnight Suns the TV show is happening as well? That's a good point. That's a good point because, I mean, you, you saw the confusion between Gotham Knights the TV show, RIP, and Gotham Knights the game. Mm-hmm. So maybe this way they can get a little bit more synergy and be clear about it. This is the show. This is the game. They have nothing to do with each other, but this is just two things that are happening. We will probably release in-game costumes for, for the movie, most likely. <laughs> And a lot quicker than the other game did. Please, good lord, release your cinematic costumes faster than Marvel's Avengers did. It won't take us a year and a half. Don't you? Maybe 60 days. Hey, we, guess what? Spider-Man? Yeah, we got Spider-Man. We, we do? It's been a year. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here, there he is. He's, on, he's outside. Oh, by the way, you know he just shows up, by the way, like in the game. Oh, no, I know. Like you walk um, in the um, in the, uh, in helicarrier, you just see some web on one of the front windows, and you press X or square. And then he shows up, hi, I need some help with the vein. Okay. Okay, that's, that's, cool. that's pretty much it. <laughs> um, so Kevin obviously has a PlayStation version of Avengers. Xbox fan, we don't get anything like that. So we just been missing out on a character we kind of need, but don't really need for this game because there's a good Spider-Man game, actually. Two good Spider-Man games you can play instead. Well, supposedly She-Hulk. Yeah, I love how every time you talk about any other superhero game, it devolves into Marvel's Avengers. But anyway. <laughs> it always does. I can't help it. <laughs> Supposedly, Winter Soldier and She-Hulk are coming, but I believe it when I see it. Yes, we'll believe that most likely next month. Um, but also in the earnings results, Take Two revealed that it's really delaying the game to ensure the teams at Fraxis Games and 2K deliver the best possible experience for our fans. Uh, which that could be good. I mean, we're all for not having crunch uh, for your studio. Fun fact: Fraxis Games is actually based in Cockeysville, Maryland. So. Uh, can we visit, please? We're real close to you. <laughs> Go up there and knock on the door. Like, hi. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. Their address is on Google.com right now. So, I mean, they're there. Let's just, they let's put just it out up. there. They know. Um, but interestingly enough, this isn't the first kind of thing the game has uh, difficulty the game has to deal with before it releases again, uh, because it looks like only PC. Uh, PS4 and Xbox Series X and S players will get the jump. Oh, PS5, sorry, will get to play before March 2023. And if you want to play the game on last gen consoles or Switch, you're gonna have to wait probably three months to play that version. Hence, like I, like I said, the the coming, I guess, great migration or forced migration of uh, Gen what's this Gen eight, the Gen mm-hmm. nine, Gen mm-hmm. seven, Gen eight, whatever it is. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> what gen are we in? Um, but the interesting thing is. Um, with that game sort of getting pushed, uh, kind of looking at your fall release video games dates, at least for right now, um, we have in September, nothing really <laughs> relative, re- really relevant to sort of go and bu- go out and buy. You obviously, try whatever you want. Uh, but in October, we have uh, Overwatch 2 on October 4th, tentatively. Um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 coming out October 28th. Gotham Knights still scheduled for October 25th. I uh, cast some debate on that one, too. Uh, and then November, you got Skull and Bones finally coming out, followed <laughs> up and swallowed up by God of War Ragnarok literally the next day after that game comes out. So what you're telling me, the only worthwhile game that isn't a first-person shooter coming out soon is God of War I Ragnarok. Mean, Overwatch, I mean, Overwatch 2 technically has first-person mechanics in it, um, but Overwatch 2 has potential as long as you just, you know, Activision figures out its ish with the, with the studio. Yeah, they, they, when they when they sold, then they're not they're not sold something like that. They are current. There's all the scandal still at, uh, at uh, Amazon Bl- or Blizzard, Am, uh, not Amazon, uh, Activision Blizzard. Um, but they were supposed to be bought by Xbox. That's still sort of up in the air, not concrete yet. But I'm assuming most likely come March it will be concrete. Take the gaming industry is scandalous, man. It's crazy. It's, they got scandals left and right, but something that isn't free of scandals, also, Kevin. Is our good friends at the DCEU and HBO Max? Yeah. 
They, they got lots and lots of explainings to do. <laughs> uh, so sort of more updates still on HBO Max because, you know, obviously more reporters are getting more hands on people that were talking about HBO Max, its merger, the future of, of certain things. Um, we found out that Ezra Miller, love them or hate them, most likely probably hate them right now, had, did film additional scenes for The Flash this summer before, obviously, the thing that happened this week. Um, interestingly enough, might be what we've kind of been hinting towards, that Ezra Miller's kind of, the DC's trying to get Ezra Miller off the film to put a new Flash actor on the film instead. What will the reign of tyranny of Ezra Miller end? I'll tell you what. <laughs> well, it might be with this movie. Who knows? Um, He's been on an unprecedented crime wave that, that nobody's ever seen before from a, from a Hollywood movie star. There's also the interesting debate, too, of uh, Fantastic Beasts 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, if they do ever make a Fantastic Beasts 4, they did kind of put Ezra Miller's character sort of in a side path. They don't really need to bring him bring them back if they want if they didn't want to. Transfiguration. Yeah, uh, he looks different now. <laughs> Deal with it. Uh, that's easy. Harry Potter. It's magic. Other interesting thing is sort of the flip side of that coin for additional scenes is The Rock has actually filmed additional scenes for Black Adam for an end credit scene. Apparently, they had a test screening uh, earlier this week where crowds who saw the first version of the film compared to this version of the film said there was an extra scene at the end of the movie that The Rock most likely filmed, connecting it to the larger DCU EU at large. Interesting. Um, it, it, it does kind of say they're not doing what I thought they were going to do to start from scratch. They're, they're trying to figure out a way to salvage it, mm-hmm. which, is, which is very interesting, but I, I still hope they, they use a flashpoint that sets off a crisis on infinite earth type event. And he can start from scratch that way. Cause I, I just feel like at this point, what, well, why even pro- 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 prolong the suffering? Well, Kevin, speaking of crisis on infinite earths, it turns out we're doing a lot of the quick hitter of the HBO max DC stories. They all kind of blend together. <laughs> turns out that according to DC films, current head as of right now, uh, might be not in the immediate future. Walter Hamada, was actually planning on doing a Crisis on Infinite Earths-based event for the DCEU, a la Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame. Apparently, since 2017, Weather Brothers has been trying to n- move towards a Crisis on Infinite Earths, but obviously hasn't happened. Um, apparently, they've been p- planning it since Joss Whedon took over for the Justice League movie, um, but it looks like probably not going to happen, which uh, all the movies that were kind of pushing towards this crossover were Aquaman, Shazam, Birds of Prey, Wonder Woman, and then Suicide Squad, the original one. We're supposed to push towards this. So it almost happened. Probably is not going to happen the way they wanted it to. Yeah, but again, that makes that so shows how, like, they were just desperate to pick to, to catch up with Marvel because a crisis event would have t- taken at least five or six years. They're trying mm. to do it in two or three. So it's still like, oh, what you, just take your time, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other interesting things is, sort of, this is all from a Hollywood Reporter, like, in-depth article on HBO Max and stuff. Um, let me try to get this real quick. There we go. Uh, turns out James Gunn's projects moving forward at DC slash HBO Max, pretty much a lock. That's probably not, pretty much not going to get canceled. Looks like season two of Peacemaker is going to be moving forward. And multiple other projects from James Gunn. Kind of, we said that he might be the sort of Kevin Feige of the DCEU or whatever it's going to be called. But this in turn plays with the same fact that Idris Elba said he's been meeting with DC about a big project in the near future. And Kevin, I think you remember two months ago when we talked about that James Gunn has another future The Suicide Squad spinoff show in the works. It might be about Bloodsport. That would be cool. Bloodsport had a very interesting backstory. Mm-hmm. Um, and Idris Elba is Idris Elba, so you kind of want to do anything you can with him anyway because he's just so magnetic on screen. I th- think this is a win-win. I mean, we know Idris Elba will do T, even though he's a movie star, he'll do TV. He did Luther for so many mm-hmm. years. Of course, he was on The Wire to kind of uh, his his breakout role. This this makes me very excited actually because <laughs> Bloodsport was really cool in Suicide Squad. You wasn't expecting to be that cool, but he was really cool. Uh, other interesting thing is, uh, for Peacemaker Season 2, I saw this on TikTok, I kind of want it to happen, uh, that the villain antagonist, not really a villain, for Season 2 of Peacemaker could, could be Katana from the 2016 Suicide Squad movie, because she was kind of MIA in the, the recent Suicide Squad movie that came out, and get and she was played by Karen Fukuhara, who is Kimiko from The Boys, 
who is a bigger deal now, obviously, than she was in 2016, at least for mainstream media. So that'd be pretty dope to have Kimiko pretty much going up against John Cena at the same time. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. And also, I don't think the character, character had any lines in the first Suicide Squad. I think she's just like there. They they said like, or she said like three lines as Katana, really. And it's kind of like, okay, you're supposed to be a bigger deal than we thought. We also just saw you the year before in Arrow. <laughs> yeah, she had more to do with Arrow than she did in Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is um, pretty amazing. But the main reason why people are thinking this is because Katana had this close relationship with uh, Rick Flag, and be kind of cool to she's seeking revenge against Peacemaker. That would and, and it'd be kind of cool to see him in this like his new, I guess, state of mind than he was mm. in at the end of Suicide Squad. Like, why are you fighting me? I don't even know who you are. <laughs> I don't even remember. Eagerly help. <laughs> <laughs> um, but two more things with DC before I switch on over to Marvel. Turns out that the Blue Beetle movie is still a go for a theatrical release, uh, which is great. I hope it still is a go uh, probably by the end of next or beginning of next year because it's supposed to come out in 2023. Um, and one thing that did get canceled, Kevin, was a planned sort of spinoff series called Strange Adventures, which is going to be produced by Greg Berlanti. Have Kevin Smith was supposed to be involved with it. And it was apparently going to be pretty much DC's answer to what if having random characters pretty much fill the scenes with one another in the DC universe. I mean, I like Kevin Smith a lot, but it makes sense because this universe is already confusing as it is. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we get it because this is what we do, but I mean, they're like, they're like three Batman. It's going to be a Supergirl in the new Flash movie, but I'm not sure if it's going to be the, the Supergirl to last mm-hmm. with. I mean... Just keep things simple for, for, for the foreseeable future. <laughs> keep it simple, stupid. K-I-S-S. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that does it for DC, Kevin. So let's switch on over to... Oh, my hair flip did a cool thing. Look at that. Switch on over to Marvel. Uh, so it turns out, got a bunch of leaks slash things people probably shouldn't have said. Might have been a leak. Maybe not. Uh, which one do you want to start with, Kev? Let's start with my, my favorite new um, Jedi. Oh, of Ahsoka? Yeah. <laughs> and like, Kevin, there's a lot of Jedis they've introduced in the past couple years. Well, she's still the newest, isn't she? I guess so. I guess so. So, yeah. Rosario Dawson. Oh, Ray. Yeah. Uh, Rosario Dawson was at a fan convention last week and apparently was hinting that Punisher, John Bernthal's Punisher, might be coming to the MCU. Turns out she's kind of walking back her statements, and it's most likely because Kevin Feige laid down the law as soon as she got off the stage at this convention. But apparently Rosario Dawson, if you remember, she was night nurse, essentially. She was the nurse character in the Netflix Marvel shows, kind of was reoccurring in every show, connecting them all, making that fleshed out universe. She was in Defenders as well. Only show she said on this convention panel was that that she wasn't on was Punisher, she did meet the character in uh, Daredevil Season 2, but she said she's excited to work with John Bernthal again and uh, getting introduced back to Marvel, hoping that she gets a chance to do it because he's coming back. Then she walked back her statement saying, oh, a fan tricked me. I don't think that's even. Ha- I don't think it's happening now. Do you think we're getting Punisher sooner than we think? How do I say it? I think she was right to walk back comments because I think things in Hollywood are always pretty fluid. Mm-hmm. They don't know it until they, they, they're shooting it. Um, I think we will get Punisher back sooner than later. I don't want it to be John Bernthal because I still want John Bernthal to be Wolverine. That's mm-hmm. my personal, you know, <laughs> vendetta against <laughs> yeah. Wolverine. Character. John, he, was be, uh, he was so good at Punisher, I'm like, just make him Wolverine now. Like, come mm-hmm. on, he'd be great. Mm-hmm. That, just picture him with, 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 with the horn hair and cigar in his mouth. That's Wolverine. Like, it's perfect. <laughs> No, Taron um, Edgerton, Kevin, damn it. <laughs> no, Taron Edgerton's going to be somebody else. Too. Okay, oh, fine. That, dang it, John Bernthal should be Wolverine. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> that means he's tall. Um, but yeah, Kevin, keep going. But um, we all know one thing is true. And as much as we love what he's done with the MCU, Kevin Feige's a dirty liar. So I, I can't really trust anything he says anyway about anything. If if she did get the uh, the Marvel brass to come to her, to, hey, shh, no, 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 no. Walk that back. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That could have been a thing too. Um, as always with the MCU, you don't know till you know. Uh, we're we're all so like what eighty percent sure that Shuri's the next Black Panther. But what happens if we if, if they make something happen and suddenly a T'Challa from Earth nine seven six walks out mm-hmm. and this T'Challa lost everybody in Wakanda, but then this Wakanda lost T'Challa. Or it's it's Namor, and we didn't think about that the whole damn or time. <laughs> 
Or it's, I don't know, another worldly Tony Stark with Connor's all white. I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> but you don't know until you know with the MCU. As much as we were, I would love John Bernthal back as Punisher, I love him more as Wolverine. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know how you do Punisher on Disney Plus, though. That's my, that's my issue. Well, I mean, we're getting there. You know, I mean, we've had the Marvel shows. They've added Deadpool and Lo- Deadpool 1 and 2 and Logan on there. So, I mean, they could. It'll be interesting how they promote it and stuff like that. But that probably be the more interesting thing is, like, probably not going to promote all the action. And they'll be like, nah, you can enjoy that on your own. I mean, Moon Knight was pretty, wasn't as brutal as they thought it would be. But still, some of those fight scenes were pretty. Baby steps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they could do it. What about, what about you? Do you want? Do you want this? Do you think this is true? Um, I think so. I think with the momentum of everyone's thinking, you know, if we are getting Midnight Suns, um, or we're getting a Marvel Knights or something like, I think maybe Marvel Knights sounds kind of cool, and it's kind of a haha. DC, we did your night show better than you did. You can't even do Gotham Knights. Um, Take I, that. I think adding John Bernthal that cast is dope because I mean we already have Kit Harrington as a. Uh, Black Knight, right? Black Sword. Black Knight. Black Knight, yes. Black Knight. Uh, yeah. We have Moon Knight. Uh, Daredevil is tossed around to being in that cast. I think having Punisher in there would be pretty cool, too. Not to have every character have Knight in their title. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, will give, it, it looks like they're trying to make this move to what we want to say, grounded heroes. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we have Echo coming up. Daredevil's going to supposedly show up next week. In, well, not next week, but Couple She-Hulk weeks. at some yeah. point. Mm-hmm. Um, Kingpin's back, um, so it looks like they're trying to make the this um, push. For, I mean, so we saw Hawkeye make this push for more ground ground level superheroes, and Punisher is like the the most buddiest ground hero superhero they have, besides like you know Daredevil and Elektra and stuff. So let's do it, but make sure he has the cool logo, not that weird logo he's got now. <laughs> well, I think there was a comic recently where he stopped using that logo because cops were using it. Mm-hmm. It was basically Marvel, you know. Basically, putting an FU to like the dirty cops that mm-hmm. use the Punisher logo, like while they're fighting crime. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if he's so happy. That'd be interesting to actually see if he has the logo on the show. Mm, interesting. Uh, yeah. But Kevin, we're not done because you did mention a certain show coming out in Marvel called Echo. And we now know Echo, that Echo, uh, Echo. seems like a certain character's fate wasn't sealed at the end of Hawkeye like we all thought it would be. Yeah, we, we saw a broad shouldered Kingpin in all his glory. Uh, and a couple of leaked photos from um, the Echo set, which was pretty pretty exciting. Because see see him in, in like in an actual you know his quintessential kingpin suit. Yeah, um, which pretty much confirms he's coming back. I mean, we kind of all knew this that Echo kind of is the well. I mean, I feel like She Hulk now is the soft entry point of Daredevil, really getting more in the MCU. Echo's continuation of that, and then bada bing, bada boom, he gets his full series, which. Is an interesting thing to note that it took four, three things before he gets his own show. Fantastic Four looking at you. Because he was in No Way Home. He was in, he's going to be in She Hulk. He's going to be in Echo. Now, and then before he gets his own show, Fantastic Four, just saying, Ben Grimm looking for you in She Hulk. Yeah, that's been another rumor. Um, That'll be interesting. Um, if that actually comes to fruition. Yes. But so on top of that, we know that's happening. We also got leaks of the Ironheart series, which is filming really at the same time as the Echo show is. Wouldn't be surprised if they're using the same locations, the same scenes. a fun thing to look out for when the shows come out. Kevin, I'm going to go first with the leak that I think ends all leaks. Because we now know who Anthony Ramos is playing uh, in the Ironheart series. And guess it's what? A- I, da, 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 da. I oh, have sorry. this I'm benefit sorry. because I share the name with third character. They're introducing The Hood. Into the MCU. <laughs> and you have found your permanent cosplay character for the rest of your life. I just have to get a red riding hood hood, and I'm good to go. I'm, I'm the hood. And I'm, that's it. In a business suit. And some kind of magic wand. Yeah, that's easy. I got my wand back there. We're good to go. <laughs> we're, we're ready. <laughs> we're ready. Uh, so, a bunch of leaks happened. Uh, we found out they showed Anthony Ramos in costume as a character known as the Hood who uh, is kind of mystical powers in the Doctor Strange line. Um, turns out he's often seen sporting a pistol in either hand as his weapon of choice that's magically imbued. Um, he popped up first in the adult-oriented Marvel Max series from Brian K. Vaughn and Kyle Hotz. Um, and also, at the same time, Kevin, we got a leak at a new... Uh, I don't know if it technically if it's the first one or the second one, but we got a leak of what? Um, before that... 
another rumor that popped up is that Agatha Harkness is going to appear in Ironheart as like the Hood's magical advisor. That's interesting because I thought she was brain wiped. Maybe they figured that out. I don't know. We'll figure. Uh, but we also got a peek at I want to say it's probably the second edition, Mark II, mm-hmm. of Ironheart's potential armor, which still looks bulky, but we're getting there. The interesting thing about it though is that it it kind of looks like those um, Stark. Not a Stark, the um, the, the Hammer Tech robots, ah, yes. Iron Man too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It kind of looks like that, but it's also interesting is that they're going to film this kind of the similar way they did with um Tony Stark, or well, with Richard Robert Downey Jr. Well, sometimes it'll be um, I guess what's the word I'm looking for, an actual suit, and other times it'll just be um, uh, you know the um the dot pants pretty much for for rendering and maybe a chest piece and a, and a, and, a, and a helmet. Yeah, I mean, let's face it, I think. I think I, Tony or Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr. was really and only in the full suit for the first Iron Man movie. Yeah, and after it. that, like you said, it was all green, that green, gray, really gray suited uh, pajama pants. We've seen a lot of characters wear in the MCU. I think it's easier instead of having to be stuck in the same suit the whole day. Um, just looking at the costume, it is interesting. Like it does, ha- it still has those emblems of the Iron Man eyes. Like that's very like kind of an iconic look is those eyes for the Iron Man costume. It's kind of like there's the rectangles that are like always angry looking. Yeah. Um, and I, I kind of think the way this series is probably going to end up is Rhodey shows up and gives her that rendering device they had, they had in, far, in No Way Home. Mm-hmm. And that's how she makes her ultimate Ironheart suit. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Oh, what was it called? A rendering device. What was it called? It was called a fabricator. That's what yes, it was. Yes, there you go. Good job. Look at yeah. you with your fancy words over there. Four syllables. Four syllables. I try. <laughs> I try. Um, but yeah, interesting notes um, that you know these series are moving forward. They're filming. Um, always good. Good ideas to see that these things are happening. Um, and obviously, Disney Plus Day, we get a couple more things, and I'm excited because uh, She Hulk comes out next week as of this podcast recording, and uh, it's looking like it's going to be a good time. Yeah, next Thursday, um, uh, I got another rumor here about, about the, the runtime of the first episode. It's supposed to be 35 minutes. No, we'll take it. We'll take it. I'll take 35. This this site says the first four will be um, in order. 35 minutes. Number two will be 28 minutes. Number three will be 32 minutes. And number four will be 34 minutes. Now, when give me that big boy episode. Then I'm like, oh, oh what's happening in that one? We know that's a big one. <laughs> 47 40, minutes. Oh, 47. <laughs> um, but obviously, we'll share more predictions for She-Hulk on Monday, sort of our last-minute predictions. Then we'll come back on you next Thursday with She-Hulk in review. view. view. She, we got to come up with a name for it. What, she, She-Hulk Sunday? So She-Hulk smashing Thursday. Well, it's Thursday as we talk about it because they pushed Andor, so we're good to go now. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, point. Shoot, I figured it out. If it, we could be smashing well, no, it's Monday. Damn it. Uh, we'll figure out the alliteration, hopefully by Monday, what to do with that. But, Kevin, we got to talk about a show that's obviously not really a show. It's more of a collection of five shorts, at least for right now. It's in the title of the episode, Kevin. It's time to talk about I Am Groot. So, Kevin, get the, sound, the soundtrack ready. Let's break it down now. There we go. All right. It worked. <laughs> it worked, and the computer hated that I clicked on that sound effect. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? Uh, so, Kevin, we're talking about I Am Groot, which, uh, as of right now, is tentatively season one of I Am Groot. We're supposed to get a new batch of five episodes, most likely closer to Guardians Volume 3, maybe after that, maybe being sort of an epilogue where this is sort of the prologue of stuff to that. Uh, but not, I can't. there's really no spoilery part of this kevin what did you think of it before we break kind of all of them down and maybe rank each one yeah i mean these are just shorts uh, i watched them and i was like okay that was the thing i, I watched <laughs> and i am done yeah it was really is they were five there's five of them that are out now um they're each they say they're about five and a half minutes long really with the credits maybe pushing four minutes if you want to say anything I think the coolest part of it was, was how he fast forwards to Marvel fanfare in the beginning. Yes. That's pretty cool. Um, but that kind of fun thing put the spin on it. We did have the Marvel animated version of the studio's logo, which is kind of cool that they're kind of sticking with that since What If is that's their animated look. So you would assume for X Men, Marvel Zombies, all that good stuff, it's going to look like that. Yeah, that, that, that's pretty cool. Kind of kind of glimpsed at that. Um, Groot is still cute as all get out, mm-hmm. so that that's cool too. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I'm not gonna lie, watching this, I maybe because I'm uh, getting older, older than you at least. Um, I was nodding a little bit like this, this is not that for me. Now, were your <laughs> expectations high for it, or were they like kind of tempered before you? I was them, expecting obviously. at least Pixar level shorts because a lot of those were actually very entertaining. Mm-hmm. But maybe because they had dialogue on some of those, maybe mm-hmm. that's why I was more entertaining. Uh, this was pretty much just like a silent group saying I am group a couple times. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think for me, I had the expectations low for this. I was like, all right, we've seen what they what pick, uh, what Disney Plus does with the shorts, sort of with Doug Days, the Baymax ones, which have been pretty trending on TikTok. I've seen a couple of them here and there. This pretty much the same je ne sais quoi. I would say really only one of the five episodes is kind of not really even plot progressing, but just like, oh, I like this. This is getting me ready for more Guardians by December and then next year. Yeah, because Rocket shows up in the last the last one, right? Yeah, well, that depends. Here's the gripe I had with it, and you might have it too. Weird thing is, Disney Plus released all five of these shorts separately as separate entries and not in like one season. Yeah, that, one, that two, three, weird. four, five. It was Groot this one. Groot Groot or it was Groot Groot's Pursuit. I am Groot. Groot takes a bath. Magnum Opus. Groot's first steps and then the little guy. All released separately, so like you kind of had to pick and choose which one you started with first. Do you remember which one you watched first? Uh, Groot, Groot the, when, when he first walks. What was that one called again? Groot's first steps. Great. That's what I yeah. started with too. And then there wasn't like continue, go to the next yeah. one. It was all right. Here's what's recommended. And I was like, well, I guess this is the next one. And I was worried the whole time. I was like, I'd really like the Rocket Raccoon episode to be the last one, not knowing which one it was. And it was doo, 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 Magnum Opus, which was the last yeah. one for me. Yeah, I, th- I feel like that, that wasn't done on purpose. I feel like that somebody just forgot to put them in all in a playlist. Like, yeah, I think that probably, was by next week they'll probably all sort it out. Um, so, Kevin, I'm assuming what was your favorite one out of the five? Probably the second one. I guess the second one uh, with the little uh, little squishy people that were attacking group. With the guns. Uh, the little guy is what that yeah. short is called. Because mm-hmm. when he comes back and steps on him, that was pretty funny. Like, yeah. The weird thing about the sh- that short, because it was promoted so much, because it was in the trailer, like that, I was like, we kind of got all the bits of this short, like already, except for like maybe the last ten seconds of it, which was kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, and um, it it, it was still kind of weird. Just how do I say this? Groot's a very angry person, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and he just do something about that. <laughs> well, I I like that like Groot isn't Baby Yoda. Groot is a punk. Uh, that's yeah, kind of how we've gotten that sort of like Kevin, you having a kid and. Me having Teddy, you know, your toddlers, the terrible twos is kind of what I've heard. You know, maybe it goes on for longer than I thought. But, you know, Teddy's had that phase, and I'm assuming your daughter has had that phase as well. Uh, she's still in the phase. So she doesn't <laughs> want to do anything we tell her. She thinks she knows everything. It's it's, it's very infuriating. No, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so on top of that, I mean, what was your least favorite one out of them, Kevin? Uh, what was the one that's in there before um, – before the, the Rocket Raccoon one. Well, Kevin, these are all out of order, so I don't know which one you watched. I'm, to, um, I'm, looking, at, I'm looking at my order right now, the way I watched. I'm trying to figure out which one it was. Mm-hmm. I'll Little go. Guy. Yeah. So it was Groot's Pursuit, maybe? Okay, so the ghost ectoplasm one? Yeah. I didn't, okay. Well, okay. What are we doing here? Yeah, it was, I, it was like, weird. <laughs> it was interesting that, like, the, the Magnum Opus, which was the last one we both watched, which is the one with Rocket Raccoon, spoiler. Bradley Cooper did come voice it. Vin Diesel did the voice for all of these. Um, that it felt the most like Guardians. Like it had that old song yeah. in it. It had ALF references in it. You know, it had a animated, very shadowy Drax taking a shower from very far away, which is fine to get away with not having to get Batista in there. Um, but the other one's kind of like, we're just letting Groot do its thing. Oh, the Milano's in the background. This, that, this one, um, Ma- Magnum Opus felt the most like James Gunn might have been heavily involved with this one, most likely. Yeah, because of the dancing scene, and then the group just murders somebody, throws him in his face. I'm like, this this guy is sick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but yeah, I mean, it's a short review because it was five shorts that are 25 minutes long. You can't really go on much about them because they didn't really ag- progress the plot. But I do think this is something these sh- the I Am Groot show is perfect. Um, you need, you have five minutes to kill. You need a kid to watch something or whoever you got five minutes to kill. It's perfect. Or for me, 
I could see this perfectly being if you're going to Disney World and you're taking that Disney bus or you're at your Disney hotel or whatever, and it's Disney just saying, here's a five minute short of I Am Groot now on Disney Plus, and it's the one you probably don't care about, don't remember. And then it's like, all right, go watch the rest, and that's it. It was good. We killed five minutes in the bus. Yeah. I see them put, putting this on like in, in when you're in queue for either the Guardians roller coaster or the Guardians um, Ooh, elevator thing. That'd be in, good. In that'd be good. Adventure. Oh, so you're thinking yeah. kind of like The Simpsons does with its episodes during the ride for The Simpsons ride? Exactly. Oh, that's realized that's technically The Simpsons is owned by Disney now, but it's still in Universal Studios. I wonder that. that was well, too. Kevin, let me tell you something. I have seen this already on TikTok. Apparently, the rights for the Simpsons ride at Universal go up in 2027. So, oh, cool. in a, well, five years from now, the Simpsons ride might not exist at Universal if they don't negotiate it right. Uh, I could see that actually happening. I was watching a video actually on Universal's expansion. They have a lot of plans, and mm-hmm. that could be one of the ones that kind of goes by the wayside. Yeah. Um, other interesting thing is, Kevin, this is kind of a breaking crisis before we... Uh-oh. Officially slash unofficially uh, add I am Groot to our MCU interview rankings. Disney Plus has officially announced its ad plan launching in December this year. Okay, so that, that that's what three or four ninety nine? I think that's what uh, it was. So Disney Plus Basic <clears throat> will cost seven ninety nine a month. Launch on December eighth. Um, the ad free version of Disney Plus will jump from seven ninety nine to ten ninety nine a month. Be called Disney Plus Premium. Um, Disney Plus Basic, which is the ad version, uh, will have the exact same content library offerings as the premium version. Um, some content won't include ads. Probably most likely like the I Am Group shorts won't have ads on it because it's only five yeah. minutes long. Um, but apparently Disney Plus Basic will run four minutes of ads per hour, which breaks down to being an ad at the beginning. and uh, Beginning of an hour-long piece of TV content, two in the uh, at the 20-minute in the 40 minute marks and a fourth ad at the end of the show, um, which is kind of the typical thing, kind of Hulu kind of, it's kind of the typical yeah. standard bearer of that. If you have the Hulu basic model, um, but just get ready. You're a Disney plus about to jump up in price. Well, I guess I probably maybe moving towards that yearly model then. Well, so that's the other thing. Uh, the yearly model will also have a price increase of about 30%. Um, so take that as you will. Um, Maybe it's time to consolidate the families of like, all right, cool. Who wants to pay it? Guess what? You don't have to pay anything else because you're paying it for a butt ton. Actually, you know, it's funny too. I, I looked at my Hulu bill recently and I've been getting like a three or four dollar credit every month oh. because I have Hulu Plus Live. Mm-hmm. And that includes ESPN and Disney Plus. But since I already have a Disney Plus account, they begin like a three or four dollar credit every month, so that actually may take care of itself. I now think about it. <laughs> oh, baby, Kevin's good to go. Um, but other interesting thing is, um, there will be some hikes for Hulu that ESPN bundle, like you just mentioned. It's really more of a dollar, so it's not too bad for you if you have the bundle. Uh, I don't even watch it. I mean, you might as well just pay for the bundle at that rate if you want to. Um, they didn't say the price increase of the yearly model in this, but I would assume it's also increasing. As well, like I said, but let's see if we do. Oh, oh no, here we go. Uh, Disney Plus Basic with ads actually will be seven ninety nine a month, no annual option. Disney Plus Premium will be ten ninety nine a month, or one hundred and nine dollars and ninety nine cents annually. So you're pretty oh, much yeah. getting a month for free if you pay annually. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, it's still one of the best deals in streaming. I believe HBO Max is the same price. It, for might, now, might be, might until it now. merges with Discovery at the end of this year. Oh, yeah, good point. That's a really good point. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it, it's, it's time to figure out what family members paying for, for what service. It's, yeah. it's, it's time. And I think, I think, I think I, I'm glad we didn't do our ranking on the streaming services. I think once all this price changing happens and HBO Max differs, I think that's definitely when we rank which one is worth the cost. You know, for us, this podcast, we can easily say Disney Plus is worth the cost for us of how much content we've gotten out of it. Uh, but, you know, if you're not really into Marvel and Star Wars, is Disney Plus really worth it for you? Probably not. If it, if it was just me, I, I wasn't married with kids, I probably only have Hulu and Disney Plus. I wouldn't even have Netflix anymore, honestly. Mm, see, that's, that's the other conundrum. And then it's like, well, do I pay for Prime? Because, you know, Prime Video really is technically free if you're paying just for Prime because you're paying yeah. for Prime. So 
Am- so much comes to Amazon Prime, you forget about the video portion of it. You, a lot you of get people like, do. <laughs> you get music, you get, um, sh- of course, shipping, you get Spotify, not Spotify, you get um, um, Audible. Mm-hmm. You get so much stuff with it that you don't even realize, oh, yeah, I can actually watch TV with this. Well, as this well. is an interesting <laughs> thing. So I had a trial of Amazon Prime. I had to cancel before today. Thank goodness I did it. Um, it, was, it. Before I canceled, it gave you that one last reminder of like, well, you saved this much by doing Prime. And then you watched zero out of zero videos through Prime videos. Like, ha ha, you're not getting me. I didn't watch anything through this. <laughs> Did they show you like 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 put some boots cat with the eyes like you pretty much that's much Hulu does that all the time it plays a clip of a like family guy like no come back please <laughs> they try to get you every time they try to it's get so you funny. every time uh, but just heads up for your wallet and if not hey guess what got a perfect Christmas gift for the family of Disney Plus for the next year I would I actually I would get rid of Hulu Plus Live. If it wasn't for like sports, mm-hmm. so I can watch I can watch football on the go. Now Hulu Plus Live cool. is pretty much like cable, right? I get confused all the time. Basically, it's cable to it's cable to go. Now Where, you you still pay for cable? No. Okay, good. Okay, I'm about yeah. to say I was like Kevin, you might want to change that. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's pretty much what it is because I, I think with with some other cable deals I haven't looked up on in a while, but to get cable to go, it costs more. Than basic cable does, mm-hmm. whereas Hulu it just costs the seventy bucks a month that you're paying, and it just comes with it. So for me, it's easier. Interesting enough, I did just go to my Disney Plus login um, to look when my <laughs> subscription ends. Just good to know. Uh, ends November twelfth, twenty twenty two, and probably for a lot of people, it ends November twelfth, twenty twenty two, because that's when you got that uh, year one bundle right before Mandalorian came out. Oh yeah, that was, that was, that was the three year deal. Three year right? bundle. Uh, it said I. I'm interested to see what happens here, but it says next billing date was November 12th. When I paid was 2019, $140 for three years. Really good price. It says I pay $69.99 a year. I'm interested to see what that price is come November, and it's probably not going to be $69.99. <laughs> you should put in, I bought some Disney World tickets. Can I get can, any credit can, for those? <laughs> well, that's the thing. If you actually have Disney Plus, at least right now until I think September, you can get discounted tickets at Disney World. I know that that's cool mm-hmm. oh interesting uh but anyway we went on a disney tirade right there kevin let's get into it it's time for mcu in review we rank them and bag them the official list of our marvel movies and shows yeah this one's not gonna be hard <laughs> okay now kevin should i go through the entire list i guess if you know okay you know we're patting content yeah. you know we're trying to get this to an hour yeah <laughs> so from the top kevin you may take a little nappy if you want to uh we have number one <laughs> avengers endgame infinity war no way home avengers civil war the winter soldier black panther guardians one thor ragnarok number 10 was iron man love and thunder far from home dr strange multiverse of madness shang chi Loki, the show, season one. Uh, interested to see what lo- season two goes. Falcon, Winter Soldier, Eternals, Home- Spider-Man Homecoming, WandaVision, Hawkeye, season one, potentially. Guardians, volume two, Miss Marvel, season one, potentially. <laughs> Black Widow, Moon Knight, definitely season one, potentially, based on Oscar Isaac's TikTok. Ant-Man, Doctor Strange, Captain America 1, Captain Marvel, What If, on a thing we kind of used because they didn't because Letterbox didn't use a logo for What If the Show. Uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Age of Ultron, Iron Man 3, Iron Man 2, Thor, Thor the Dark World, Incredible Hulk at number 36. Kevin for the 37th entry, She-Hulk being 38th when that comes out. Where would you put Groot, which its placeholder right now in our ranking is called The Change at Groot with an E? I would put it dead last. Dead last, okay. Yes, See, now, here's the thing. I would say, like, obviously, it's below What If. Just, I think What If was more entertaining. I think, obviously, this wasn't really plot progressing. There wasn't really a full story behind everything. Um, but I think you're right. Uh, <laughs> I think it'd be really messed up. It'd be like, The Incredible Hulk, the one, and a half, one hour and a half movie, is worse than 25 minutes of Groot content. No. Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was cute for somebody. Obviously, this is made for, for an age demo that we are far far from so yeah it's it's, it's last but yeah. still it looks good it looks great it looks good it looks it look crappy now here's the thing uh so we've kind of said this that we i think at one point i think most likely after black panther comes out we're going to re-rank the rankings we'll obviously have an idea of shows of season twos and things and whatnot i think any show that gets a season two in our ranking 
we can re-rank based on its second season, which could be good for it or could be bad for it. It's fun. Uh, yeah, so, that's fun. Let's do that. So Groot could go up higher based on the second batch of episodes that are coming most likely in the next year. Probably <laughs> won't because it'll still really only be like 45 minutes of content. But what are you going to do? <laughs> Groot is now the number one show of the MCU. Hey, to the top spot, baby. But also looking at, you know, Miss Marvel, if most likely that gets season two, Moon Knight could move up in our rankings, which could be good. You know, maybe season two, they figure out what they're doing. Loki, I think, could have the potential to go down. Who knows? It could. Um, <clears throat> actually, it's funny. Was somebody, I just saw some screenshots of Loki of them on set, and you can see Sylvie. Is the one in front of the McDonald's? Now, this one's, I think these are newer, actually. Ooh. I, I think in the last one, I, I don't think I saw Sylvie in the last one. Interesting. Interesting. More content, which we'll assume we'll see about a month from now, which is literally Disney Plus Day is less than a month away from now. Yeah, we're, 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 summer's riding down, but Disney's heating up. Disney's oh, heating up, and September is going to be a month to remember for this podcast, most likely. Uh, we're, we're so in radio. You can just tell. <laughs> Come on, Sunday, 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 the September slam down. We're going to have a good time. <laughs> Most likely, we hope, on September the 15th, that episode, whatever that Thursday is. I thought it was 7th. I thought it was you. I'm like, oh, shoot. I, I did the math there. I was like, wait, the 17th is Saturday. Two days before that's Thursday, the 15th. September 15th going to be a good episode. <laughs> the question is, with the McDonald's... Uh, Screen like though we have McDonald's Loki Happy Meals. Oh, I hope so. I think you have to. Maybe you get a Loki Batman. meal instead of a Bad Bunny meal or a J Balvin meal. <laughs> it's a Loki meal. So it's clear in this, in this. Again, I'm sorry I'm about the end, but in this in this uh, screen league, you can. It's, it's an old McDonald's, so they probably must have gone some point in time oh, before now. Good, good McDonald's, good McDonald's back in the day. Uh, before we go, uh, that was kind of the wrapping on the group part and the Disney stuff. I forgot to mention, I watched the Lego uh, Summer Vacation, Star Wars Summer Vacation, the Lego uh, special. Very good, actually. Okay. Um, it kind of actually put some spec and redemption for the new cool characters and perfect synergy in the in the special. It's only like 45 minutes. They have the Clone Wars actors obviously voicing characters in Lego form because it's easier to pay them. Um <laughs> the, the characters go on a summer vacation to the Halcyon, which is the Star Wars hotel at Disney World. So they're pretty much promoting everything there. And because your boy's seen all the videos, I'm like, oh, that's a thing. Oh, that's a thing. They even have magic bands at one point. <laughs> oh, Disney, you clever, clever, clever. So wow. even if you don't like the Lego specials, I think this one kind of worth just watching just to see all the fun little like. That's a Disney World Easter egg. Oh, that's a good Star Wars Easter egg back in the day. Well, I enjoyed the, the Christmas one. Mm -hmm. Did they do a Halloween one back in the day? They did. It was at Vader's Castle. The I think they've gotten better. I think the Halloween one yeah. was probably the worst out of the three. This is the last one out of these planned trilogy of specials they were going to do. Um, but other cool thing is uh, Boba Fett is attacking a ship. I won't say who's on the ship. But uh, Boba Fett's starship appears out of the cliffs, and then it goes, Boba Fett, boo. And I'm like, ah, oh, we're introducing this. Let's go. It's great. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of hoping that with the success and like the, the madness of the, and, the, and the clarity of the Star Wars ones, they do an MCU Lego special soon. They kind of makes fun of the MCU at See, some point. See, that's the thing. Like, they, they've had those Lego specials, but like they haven't really – they're kind of just on the back end of Disney+. Plus. I think they just kind of forked them over. They were the – shovelware that was kind of direct to dvd yeah if they did that for the mcu i mean the lego marvel avengers games very good um but they did that with the mcu i mean and just used your what if cast as voicing all the characters come on, i'll do it i'll watch it again let's go because i like how they take, take the humor and kind of make, make make light of star wars like like mm. when everybody saw grogu in a star wars one like oh my gosh look at that thing that's so cute exactly how can it not be cute uh, like i love that so if you need something to watch that's not prey there you go. You have the opposite end of the spectrum there, which is less bloody and less violent, just by a little bit. <laughs> oh, you know what? I actually I did watch that um, John Cena Little Rail movie. It was actually pretty funny. Right. Do you remember the title of it? No. Oh, Vacation uh, Friends. Uh, Vacation oh. Friends. And was it? It was good. Yeah, it was pretty funny actually. Not, not, you don't need to go out of your way to watch it, but if you want something to go on and laugh at while you're just hanging out on your phone, it's pretty good. Kevin, I was about to tease. Well, I guess we'll find out what the title is next time on the podcast. Uh. It's a good teaser, but you know what? Kevin remembered. Damned Kevin's memory. <laughs> the one time I remember somebody's name. My name was something. <laughs> That's okay. Hey, Kevin, what's my name? 
Um, um, something with a a, a, a do. Do do. Is Melvin Melvin do? <laughs> no, Scooby Doo. Anyway, that's a fun Scooby Doo reference for you. Uh, my name is Hoodie. And I'm Kevin. Uh, you can listen to everything we're talking about by going to at if underscore pods or hot 995com slash crisis crew. We'll be back on Monday with them She-Hulk previews. And then Thursday, She-Hulk in review, tentative title <laughs> as of right now. <laughs> but you've officially listened to this Thursday episode of what, Kev? Crisis on Infinite Podcast. I know you mentioned this about 45 minutes ago, but I didn't say it, I'm going to say it now. I'm worried about Gotham Knight.